Navigating the terminal is an essential skill and without it you can't really do much of anything. But luckily there are only a few commands that you need to know in order to be successful in navigating the terminal with Bash. And the first of those commands that you should know is the print working directory command or PWD command. Using the PWD command is very simple. You just type PWD and it will print out your current working directory. Now you'll notice that in my prompt, which is this line here, I actually have the current working directory listed. So I never need to wonder where it is in the command prompt that I'm at. Now that is about as far as I'm gonna go with bash profiles. That's a whole nother rabbit hole that you're more than welcome to go down, but it's outside the scope of this particular series. Just know that the reason why I have that in this particular prompt is the code spaces provided me with a default profile and that profile is coding, um, is coloring and pulling in the information from these different bash commands to provide me with this unique prompt. So that's it for the current working directory if you don't have it as part of your profile you can just issue the command to find out where it is in the file system that you're at your current working directory and if we did the help on this command we could see a short synopsis and overview so we did pwd dash dash help we could see it prints the name of the current working directory and it gives us some different options to show if we're in a physical path or using symbolic links and stuff like that the next command that you need to be aware of for navigating the file system, probably the primary means of getting anywhere is the CD command. So the CD command is a very simple, it stands for change working directory. And all you need to do is put in the path of where you wanna go. So if I wanted to go to my home directory, which is typically represented by the tilde, I could type CD tilde. And if I did PWD, it will actually give me the full path to it. So it's home VS code, that's my home directory for this user. And if I wanna know who I am, who I'm logged in as, I could put who am I. So I'm Visual Studio Code, that's the user on this system or this container image for Ubuntu. And my home directory is home VS code. And that, again, I could find with the PWD and I changed to that directory with the CD. Now, if I wanted to get back to my workspace directory, I would have to do workspaces, bash for beginners, and I would change back. And that's really all that you need to know about the CD command. It allows you to go from one location to the other. Now, there is another way to navigate the file system, which is push D and pop D. Now, before we look at the push and pop commands, it's important to understand that they work with a stack. So a stack is a data structure in computer science that is a last in first out operation. So as you notice, we went from our workspace directory, bash for beginners, then we went to my home directory or the user's home directory for, for VS Code, and then back to workspaces and bash for beginners. Now, when we're using the CD command, when you're using the CD command, it doesn't keep track of where you've been. The push and pop commands do by adding the directories to a stack. That's where the push comes, where it's gonna push a directory onto the stack and pop means it's gonna take a directory off the top of that stack. So you can think of a stack just like layers. Your first one's gonna be down here, your next one. And then when you pop things off of the stack, it's always gonna be the last one that was in until you get to the bottom of that stack. And so this is very useful when you're writing scripts or you're trying to navigate between different levels and you don't wanna remember the full path. You just wanna go back two steps ago or one step ago, and that's where the pop and push commands become very useful. To see this in action, I'll clear the screen and I will change back to my home directory where I have some folders that we'll be able to navigate. So if I look, um, at this directory with another command called tree. This will show me the directory structure all the way down from my current working directory. So here I have three folders that are nested inside of each other, one, two, and three, and two is a subdirectory of one, and three is a subdirectory of two, and so forth, so we can see how we navigate this. So if we were to use the cd command, I can cd into one, and then I can also cd into two, three, in one step but I can't get back to one. If I needed to get back to one, here's a little trick for you with CD. You can type dot dot and that will bring you one level back. And then you can hit the forward slash and do dot dot again, and that'll bring you back two levels. And you can repeat that as many times as you want. As you can see, now I'm back at one, but if I were to use push D and pop D, this would be one operation. So if I, Again, I'm in the first directory at the top of that nested directory structure, and I use push D and I go to three. I've added where I was to the stack and now I'm currently inside two, three, and I can take a look at that stack that I was talking about before with the ders command with the dash V option. And so I can see here that I have one item in my stack, which is 
that first directory and I can get back to it without having to do cd dot dot slash dot dot by using the pop command. So the pop d command will take that first item that was on the stack. So it's going to take one again. It's um, last in first last in first out. So when I hit pop d now I'm back at one and I didn't need to do cd dot dot slash dot dot. And if I do ders dash v, you'll notice that one, two, three is no longer on the stack because I've popped that off. Now, this doesn't seem very useful when you're navigating. Why wouldn't you just put CD dot dot? Well, it's super useful when you're working in many different directories with a script and you want to push yourself into one directory and maybe run some tests and then pop into a different directory and want, run some more tests or wait some time. So that's when push and pop become very, very useful in navigating the file system. It's especially in scripting. Um, but it's also useful if you're navigating like huge chunks of different areas in the file system, even at the command line.